Welcome to another episode of Jacob's House of Rock. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the Artist Guitars LP59 guitar. Now, this is uh, very clearly a, um, epic, uh, a Gibson Les Paul guitar copy. And a nice, ex inexpensive one at that. So yeah, um, let's get into it. So, for those of you who don't know, Artist Guitars are an Australian brand of guitars. They make, you know, fairly inexpensive guitars and music equipment and stuff like that. And um, I actually think, uh, from what I've heard, they don't actually make the guitars. They kind of just distribute them here and, you know, fashion them to their, their designs and stuff. But they're actually probably made more likely in China. Now, there's nothing really listed on the guitar here, but, you know, it would be pretty obvious that that's the case. Uh, especially judging by the prices of some of their instruments. Um, this guitar in particular is their highest, um, you know, tier model of the Les Paul style guitar. They also have an LP60 guitar, which is, you know, a lower grade version of this one. Um, but I'll get into the differences between uh, those two in a second. Uh, first, I'll just add that uh, what you heard at the beginning of the video um, just now was um, a little demo I did of this thing uh, playing a, a little bit of a variation on one of my songs called the spider song and Yeah, this thing just plays great. Uh, that was recorded. Um, I'll just show you guys through this amp here You, you might have thought it was uh, the orange hold on that or orange just behind me there, but no it was actually um this Laney LC150, uh, which is uh, mic'd, of course, with an SM57, and, it, and if you're curious, those are other settings on it there. Don't know if you can see. Doesn't matter too much, because from what I heard, this guitar sounds good through pretty much uh, anything. Um, obviously, a shitty amp will make a, even the best guitar sound shitty, but etc, etc. Now, so, um, for those for those of you who haven't watched my unboxing of this thing, I do recommend checking that out, that one out. I was a bit drowsy in that video, but other than that, you kind of get to see what state this guitar was in when I got it. Because um, this particular one that I got is um, was a fact was a returned guitar because it uh, was damaged, so I got it at quite a nice discount. Adding to that, that it had an issue with this fret here. And um, yeah, you got to see the state at which of which this thing was uh, uh, arrived to me at. However, aside from the damage and you know the little bit of a damaged fret, which luckily actually does play, um, uh, overall I'd say this thing was uh, you know set up beautifully, uh, finished really nicely, and it just yeah it was a great guitar. So let's get into its features. So like I said, this is their highest tier model. Um, of the Les Paul style guitar and it, the features that it includes are an all mahogany body and neck so you got that nice red color here for all the mahogany which means it is a very heavy so this guitar weighs almost five kilograms or just there under I haven't actually weighed it but but from what other people have said in listings it should weigh almost five kilograms um, it's got a flame maple top. It looks really beautiful. Now, one of the things when I got this guitar that I was a little bit concerned about was I was worried it would look a little cheesy. Now, um, in the photos particularly that they had the stock images of the white background on their listings, it really made the red around the edges look just really bright and just not all that appealing. However, and it might even be coming out on camera for you guys here as a little bit odd looking. But in person, uh, def uh, this uh, finish actually looks really beautiful, um, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And just in hand, it looks really nice, and especially just sitting around for my other guitars, uh, this one definitely stands out. Um, another great thing about this guitar is it's actually very accurate to a Gibson Les Paul. Um, as I brought up in my unboxing video, I have uh, played on Les Pauls uh, just a tiny bit um, when I was uh, fixing up some guitars for some people. I can never afford an actual Les Paul myself, but I, I, I have got the chance to have them in hand, and this thing feels very similar. Um, definitely weight-wise, this could be as heavy, if not heavier, than an actual Les Paul, 
Um, you can tell that it's very solid just by, you know, doing that, except for, you know, just under the... Um, under the, the control panel here, and, and, you know, down here they'd have a channel and everything, but uh, aside from that, this, this feels like a very solid body. The neck is very robust. It's got that, um, that nice, thick, sort of Les Paul-style neck that you'd expect. I'm not sure if it's exactly accurate to a Les Paul or not, but it's definitely got the right feel for it. And from what I've heard, these are pretty close. They might even be slightly slimmer, but it feels nice and thick, and it, you know, is really good to dig into um, with the strings. And that's kind of my favorite thing about this guitar, really. Because uh, before getting this, uh, this, I was only just slightly curious about Les Pauls. I was never, like, overly fascinated with them. And I didn't really get the hype, but then, you know, uh, the guy brought those in, and I got to have a chance to play on them, and that kind of got me a bit interested. And then I finally, because uh, I'm seeing Slash uh, in a couple of days playing live, uh, and I'm really excited for that, but it just really made me want to try one of these things. And seeing the price of this and just other reviews, I was like, you know, what have I got to lose? So I, I, I picked it up, and it's one of my favorite guitars now, honestly. Um, because, you know, the, the weight of it and just the, the robust feeling of it is just great to really dig into when you're playing. And, um, the setup on this one was actually really nice, because apart from this fret here, which actually still works, luckily, I, I mean, I wouldn't really do any big bends on it, because it's a little rough, but it still, you know, intonates and doesn't have any buzz. It might, the intonation might be um, a, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off, nothing noticeable, plus it's only one fret of a guitar that has so many others. So yeah, um, going back to its features, it's, um, it's very close, like I said, to the real thing. It has the carved uh, sort of contoured top here, the, the, you know, flame maple, which does look really nice. It's not perfectly mirrored, unfortunately, but again... For a guitar at this price point, very much um, a beautiful finish. And like I said, so it's got basically the same woods, although I think this has a veneer, uh, or at least that's what I would expect, which means it has like a very thin uh, sheet of flame maple glued to the, to the top as opposed to a chunk of it that's been, you know, pressed on top of the um, mahogany. Not a big deal, that wouldn't affect the sound at all, in all honesty. Um, has the same scale length as an actual Les Paul from what I've looked up, so that's really good. And the binding is really nice on this thing, actually. It's not perfect, there are some areas where you look around and you can see just some little, in, not, not really imperfections, but just some things that are questionable. Like, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but in, uh, in here, you can see that where the binding ends, there's kind of, it, you can see under the, the red gloss, there's still some binding under here, so it kind of overflew, but oh, I don't know if that's a, a word, but you know, so the binding continues under that red gloss just a bit here. Definitely not noticeable if you're just playing it, and even if you do notice it, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, also you have, uh, what else? Oh yeah, also you have some imperfections like on here. There's what looks like a pencil mark under the gloss here. I have no idea why that's there. It's probably just a factory error. Somebody's marking off something and they forgot to rub it out. It's a little bit of a shame, but it again, I've never been overly bothered by uh, the the looks of a guitar. As long as the overall look is really nice. If it's got some you know, little dints in it, again, that's why I bought this one, which has this huge crack in it, but it made it a lot cheaper. So it has this... Um, that damage in it again that was in the listing so i was well aware of that um but there you know uh when i if you watch my unboxing you'll see that it does have stuff they didn't mention in the listing like uh there's a cracks there's a little bit of cracks in the gloss just here and that fret so that got me a 20 percent discount which is really great but yeah so going back the the binding is done really nicely and one of my favorite things about the binding on this is they included fret nibs i believe they're called so if you guys can see there at the edge of the frets you can see the binding actually um touches the tops of the frets there and is kind of contoured to fit with them 
so basically the binding um, on the edge here uh, you know co covers the edges of the frets here which you know uh, pliability wise doesn't really change much it's mainly an aesthetic thing but it does mean that the edges of the frets are really smooth because they have that plastic binding uh, protecting you from any sharp fret ends so that's one of the one of the benefits I'd say for uh, for this guitar with that so um, also it's very rare to see on guitars at this price point and genuine Gibson Les Pauls do have that feature so that's another uh, benefit for this thing so we've got the rosewood fretboard on this particular model uh, pretty much all of them do but um uh, and we've got these nice sort of tra trapezoid inlays they got a cool shape going on there uh, look very authentic to a Gibson although they do have this sort of curve on the side of them I don't know if the real Gibsons have straight edges on their inlays or not either way I don't care because these look really nice and they're done really well uh, a cool feature of this one again because this is their sort of deluxe models of this one so they do include some nice features and we have a bone nut it's also set up really nicely and functions really well so I do like this bone nut it um, I think it does add a nice sound and tuning stability and all that to the guitar uh, and we have locking tuners which is really great for a guitar at this price point and they function pretty nicely they're not like top of the line locking tuners but um, they they function really well I've had no issues with them and they definitely make restringing this guitar a lot easier so for those of you who don't know what locking tuners do it's basically there's a uh, this little knob that you turn here that's um, that screws a little locking pin into the top of the string when you pull it through it, this um, this hole here and that just holds the string in, in instead of you having to wrap it around a ton of times and try and lock it in just with friction so it means you have more tuning stability and it makes uh, um, restringing the uh, guitar much faster and simpler so that's really great also the, b the b biggest difference that you see between this and an actual Les Paul is of course the headstock design as far as Les Paul copies go um, I think this one's got a pretty nice headstock design got the artist guitars logo up here and it's got a nice um, very simple shape here you know, the Gibson ones would have like a little notch in the middle here and more of like an open book sort of a uh, look but they just sort of rounded off that notch and it does look really effective and a lot better than like I said some of the other copies um, I'm actually picking up uh, uh, what are they called Harley Benton um, Les, Les Paul or SC for single cut guitar um, and Harley Benton SC 550 uh, to be precise so I'm actually picking one of those ones up uh, to do a comparison with this thing because they're both uh, new in the same sort of price range and uh, they're both really renowned as great Les Paul uh, clones um, this one I've just on looks alone is far more accurate because it has this um, this horn here and just the shape here and the way the neck is set in is far more accurate to a real Les Paul but you know we'll see which one plays better and you know looks better and all that sort of stuff when that one comes in but um, overall uh, this one's already taken the money for me because it's just screams classic Les Paul hard rock just on from the get-go so yeah um, like I said it has a different headstock uh, the only thing that I don't really like about this design is the truss rod cover it's just a very simple sort of um, rounded uh, triangle shape I don't know what else you'd call that and it does the job looks nice again the truss rod cover really isn't the most important part of a guitar but I am replacing it with a um, epiphone style truss rod cover now the reason I'm going with the epiphone style as opposed to a actual Les Paul style is because an actual um, Gibson Les Paul one has uh, two screw holes one at the top and one at the bottom and so that would leave these two open holes here plus I don't know if there's even like wood under this thing to screw in that one uh, the screw there because it will be in the middle um, but with an epiphone one they have a flat bottom but the same sort of shape top 
um, bell-shaped top, so it would look a lot more genuine and function with the screw placement of this here guitar. So that's the only reason I opted for that style as opposed to uh, trying to find an actual Gibson-shaped one. And it's just going to say Les Paul Custom because that was the cheapest one I could find. And I don't really care what, too much what it says as long as it says Les Paul. Um, and yeah, so overall, looks-wise and build-wise, this thing is done really nicely. Um, I, I believe that the hardware they use here is Japanese made hardware with um, brass saddles, which is kind of cool. So you can see there the little saddles look a little bit brownie. Uh, that's because they're made of brass. So I uh, don't know how much of an impact on the sound that should have, but you know, uh, it should have sort of, it's better than it, than it being made of, say, uh, Chinese pop metal, for example, or, or who knows what. Um, the the knobs function really nicely actually all of these they're set in really well and they hold their um their placement quite firmly and yeah they're, they're all very smooth very functional no problems there the switch here is actually really good it clicks in really well feels very solid it's not going to slip or anything it doesn't feel loose so very good switch and uh, now we're getting, getting to the pickups here. So originally, these Artist uh, Guitars LP59 models had Wilkinson pickups. I'm not sure exactly what model Wilkinsons they used, because there was a couple out there. But Wilkinsons are a, a really uh, well-renowned brand for making really affordable, cheap um, uh, guitar pickups, for example, as well as other hardware items that go on guitars. Um, and uh, much like Artist Guitars, I think they're a, a brand that actually sources their stuff and makes them in China, but they're uh, a British brand, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but they, you know, design all their stuff and, and try and get really quality products. So they used to have Wilkinson pickups, and if you pick up an older model of these, or I'm not sure if their cheaper alternatives still use Wilkinson, the uh, LP60 um, uh, model, but the LP-59s they have now have their own artist brand pickups called Bullbuckers. Um, we can see them here. Um, they covered, they have a, a, a nickel silver pickup covers, so that's really good because nickel silver is a very transparent sounding pickup cover and they don't create extra ringing or anything like that compared to other cheaper materials for making these pickup covers. So that's really good. And you can see the little artist brand logo here. Hopefully you can kind of get a good look at those. And these are actually really nice pickups. They're Alnico pickups, Alnico 5 magnets, uh, bar magnets are used in both of these. And they are voiced specifically, I read on their, uh, one of their listings of just, just selling these individual pickups. Uh, the bridge pickup here is based off the Gibson JB pickup, which um, is uh, oh, who is it? Uh, Jeff Beck. The the Jeff Beck signature pickup sound, um, which I heard that actually um, forgot his name, but the guitarist from uh, Tool also uses that particular pickup in his um, guitar. And uh, that's kind of a sound that I was hoping to get out of a Les Paul style guitar, because that's one of my favorite guitar tones, is the Tool sound. So I was really happy that this one was sort of voiced uh, to sound a bit like that one, really good for hard rock and metal stuff. Uh, the bridge pickup here is voiced uh, to, to be as close as they can be to a um, Gibson Jazz pickup, I believe. So. Um, I'm not really familiar with those, but obviously they'd be good for jazzy stuff, hard rock, that sort of stuff. And um, I can say firsthand, these pickups are really nice, because initially when I uh, bought this thing, I was uh, planning on replacing the pickups with something a little bit more fancy. But seeing as how they already sounded so good out of the box, I have n no inclination now to change these out. I'm really happy with the sound of these, no complaints here. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this guitar's features, as far as I can tell. It has no um, push-pull knob to do coil splitting or anything like that. I think some of the other models um, of, of this guitar do. Um, or I might be thinking of the Harley Bentons. I'm pretty sure, but yeah. 
Um, so like I said, the most important thing about this guitar is the playability, the setup, and stuff like that. And I don't know how other ones of these have uh, gone for or how the cheaper ones have been made, but this particular one has a really good um, string height and the frets have been leveled beautifully. I've had, I've had no fret bars. You can see they're nice and low here. Really nice. I mean, it's hard to tell on camera, but compared to some of my other guitars, they're very playable. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the features. Um, with the demo that you heard and everything, um, I have made a couple of changes to the guitar here. Very simple ones. I've lowered the pickups ever so slightly. Because I've actually discovered this um, pretty recently that the pickup height really makes a big difference to the sound. Because in my previous review of the, um, I'll just show you guys. These John Birch Heaven and Hell set pickups, I was having issues with the uh, bridge pickup being very muddy sounding. Uh, and, you know, I've I tried um, ch changing out uh, potentiometers and stuff like that with higher um, uh, rated ones, as in higher, um, oh, what's it called? Hi higher K ratings. So I went from a 500K pots in this to a 1 megs. Um, well, just one 1 meg, actually. I just wanted this pickup to be even brighter to help, you know, cut through the mix or whatever. But basically, um, what I discovered with this particular guitar was if you lower the pickups, it helps brighten them a lot. And this one's got the screws, additionally, as the pole pieces, which are very high up. So, you, so they give the illusion that the pickup is actually um, lower than, it, than the actual magnetic field is, if that makes sense. Because the, the, the screws are magnetized and they stick up way out of the pickup casing. So yeah, uh, I discovered through lowering the, br the the bridge pickup somewhat that it really helps open up the sound and make it a lot more dynamic because you get a lot of compression and you can get some uh, an illusion of a brighter sound but really you're getting more woofiness and a compressed sound so you lose a lot of the dynamic range in that. Um, so I do recommend if you have concerned with some of your pickups, uh, mess around with the pickup height before doing anything else. Um, you know, of course, mess around with the tone, pots, and all of that. Um, uh, I don't mean replacing them, but just turning them and stuff like that. But ultimately, um, raising and lowering the pickups can have a huge difference on how well they play, because most pickups do have a sweet spot. And I found that lowering these ever so slightly, that when the way they came stock, helped open it up just a little bit more, sound-wise. They sound a little bit more dynamic. So that's a great thing that you can do. And, um, yeah, so, basically, before I cut to my conclusion, uh, what I'm gonna do is, just because I wanna really show off how pretty this thing is, to you guys, I'm gonna do a slideshow of pictures of this thing, uh, with a backing track of a song called Peppermint by my band Toxic Bird, uh, that I've been working on at the moment. And it's gonna have all the guitar tracks, is, uh, pretty much gonna be just from this guitar. There'll be a little bit of stratty echoey stuff in there, but um, other than that, uh, the main sound you'll be hearing is the guitar uh, from this thing. <laughs>
Welcome back, guys. So, um, I hope you enjoyed that little song there. If you did, uh, please check out my band, Toxic Bird. Uh, we've been working on putting out our own sort of DIY recorded album for quite a while now, and we're getting really close to having it finished, and uh, that'll be one of the tracks on that thing. So don't forget to follow us. Uh, links in the description uh, below, as always. So yeah, in conclusion, the Artist Guitars LP59 uh, model guitar is, without a doubt, m a really good bang for your buck. Um, I mean, I got this thing at a heavily discounted because of uh, cosmetic damage to the guitar. However, I would have happily pl uh, paid full price for this thing um, in a new condition because this thing um, is just a fantastic Les Paul copy and it really goes to show um, how much... <laughs> you're just wasting your money really or how much uh, companies like Gibson and Fender etc are um, you know just you're not getting your bang for your buck basically if you're paying full price for some of those guitars compared to what you can get in a budget guitar like this or how close you can get uh, to one of those things now um you know if you still want to go out and get one of those things just to say that you've had that you you know you have a genuine Gibson more power to you I would be I'd totally go for one of those if I could but for an actual working musician somebody who um just wants to you know have an instrument of close enough caliber and to still be able to you know afford other stuff in life um, you really can't go wrong with something like this. Um, it's just basically surprised me um, at the quality of this thing compared to what I've expected. Because I have played some artist guitars at like secondhand stores here and there, and they were nothing special. Um, I think I tried an artist SG. Um, it could have just been really poorly set up, is the other thing, too. Um, so I wasn't really expecting much out of this thing. But um, even with some of the praise that I saw in the other videos, uh, I really wasn't expecting anywhere something anywhere near as nice as this. And now it's honestly um, in one of my favorite guitars. So yeah, I know I've been sounding like I've been praising the hell out of this thing, but I kind of think uh, this guitar does deserve it. Because it really proves um, a concept which I strongly believe in, is that in order to you know have great tone and be able to you know sound like, um, get that... Uh, guitar sound that you really want you don't have to pay for the big brands for it there a guitar is in 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 concept is you know a pretty simple thing and uh, if you can manufacture it close enough and you know especially if you can get the neck set up well as in um, a low string action no fret buzz stuff like that then everything else can be done relatively simply and relatively cheaply and this one just shows that you can do that and have a beautiful looking guitar because like I said in person this thing looks gorgeous and it just screams classic guitar Les Paul uh, so yeah the only real changes that I've had to do to this thing is add a string because it came missing one string because uh, I don't know some issue it was second hand who cares and I'm gonna add, replace the truss rod cover for aesthetic purposes, and I'm also gonna install a pick guard just to make it look even more like a, you know, sort of classic rock Les Paul kind of thing. But other than that, those things I'll just add um, only a couple of dollars to, you know, add those things, and they're already in the mail here, uh, coming to me. But other than that, I'm absolutely loving this guitar, and I highly recommend you guys uh, check these out if you're after a Les Paul copy. Um, and um yeah however i am going to be reviewing the holly benton um sc 550 uh, model guitar which is another uh, les paul copy within the, a similar price range to this granted it'll be cheaper if you live in um europe because they're centered in germany again made in china a german company um uh, that you can find them on Toman, is the store, T-H-O-M-A-N-N, -N, uh, for those, and I'll be doing a comparison video, and there are Epiphone Les Pauls, of course, which are uh, the, the quintessential sort of Les Paul budget version, kind of like Squire is to Fender. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on one of those, um, 
I definitely won't be buying one of those because I'm happy with this thing and I already kind of don't think I really need the to the um the Holly Benton one because I was I wasn't expecting this one to be as good especially even not visually <laughs> but it really uh shone to me um when I got it in hand but I already had that one on order so I'm gonna you know compare these two but hopefully if I can get my hands on an Epiphone one uh, maybe if somebody in Brisbane has an Epiphone which they would like to lend me for that comparison, I would be really appreciate that. Especially if it's an Epiphone that's uh, in a close uh, either price range to this, which, you know, they're not. At least in Australia, they're bloody damn expensive. Uh, compared to the $400 new that this thing would cost, it's Australian dollars, or the uh, or, or, or half or just over half that which is how much I paid for this thing uh, with the damages so to find a Les Paul within that price range you could probably do it for four or five hundred dollars uh, used uh, if you're lucky but um, for a new one you definitely couldn't get it in this price range but again they're the quintessential sort of um, budget Les Paul so if you guys know um, if anyone in Brisbane, especially around the Morningside, Bulimba, Balmoral sort of area happens to have one uh, that I can use just for like an hour or two just to do a comparison, then that would be really awesome. If not, I'll just compare the Harley Benton and there's already comparisons to both these and Harley Bentons compared to Epiphones and you can kind of uh, figure out which one's for you based on that. Uh, also remember, these new ones do have the bullbuckers, so a lot of those older comparisons have the Wilkinson pickups, and they will sound different. Um, I would also love to see, compare this one to the ones with the Wilkinson pickups, the older variants, but um, what really matters is that the guitar sounds good to you, and, um, and all of that, and I think this one is a winner. So this has gotten to be a very long video, and I do apologize for that, I just... Um, I just absolutely love this guitar, especially for the price, and I'm sure you will too. Um, I'm not endorsed in any way, shape, or form by um, artist guitars, but I thought since I did manage to get this one at such a great price that uh, it would be worth giving them a really special sort of um, uh, video about this thing. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and all that jazz. I, I love it when you guys do that stuff, especially comments, because uh, they're always very fun to reply to. And yeah, uh, peace out guys, keep on rockin'!